This segment is brought to you by Carbonite. It is once again time to answer your emails. Thank you for sending those in to feedback at hack5.org. And we have yes. one great one this week. Yes, we do. It's from Mark. He asks, he wants to know how to disable TCP IP, DHCP, and other stuff in Backtrack and other Linux distros so that you don't accidentally connect to AP. Uh, like access points that you're mm -hmm. like, oh, hey. I'm, yeah, right. No, oh, I'm on my home Wi-Fi now. No, anyway. <laughs> no, I totally understand. That's probably uh, a good thing to keep in mind. Actually, in Backtrack in Most Debian, you just want to take a look at slash Etsy slash network. Etsy? Etsy. And you'll find, you know, the uh, scripts for, you know, uh, your inner interfaces coming up, going down, what they want to do. Uh, actually, if I cat slash etc slash network slash interfaces dot stock. You may remember from a few weeks ago, I backed it up. This is the default one. And every time it says auto here, that's saying automatically bring up this interface where it says DHCP. It's automatically going to try to get an address from a DHCP server if it wow. exists. Um, as far as wireless is concerned, Backtrack comes with WICD. It's a nice little you know, manager here where you can come in and say, intranet. WICD and it finds all of the uh, wireless networks in the area and allows you to connect to them pretty easily. Cool. I actually prefer Network Manager up here. I've got it disabled at the moment just because it has a good VPN connection. But I actually don't use either of these to connect to uh, wireless access points just because I'd rather have manual control over all of that stuff. And while WICD can be configured very well not to automatically connect to something just based on its SSID, you know, it's just nice to know that you can uh, a little bit more in control. You know, <laughs> it's course. like it's of the course. difference between a point like and shoot and one control. of these guys, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, oops, sorry, Paul. Um, basically, what you want to do, or at least this is what I do, is I'll do like a, we're doing a lot of this on Hack Tip right now. Let me make sure my WLAN 0 is up. Yes, it is. All right. So, uh, what I'll do is IW list uh, WLAN 0, and then I'll scan. And then I like to pass that to grep and look for a couple of things. Namely, the ESSIDs. I'll also look for encryption. And I will also look for WPA. Go ahead and run that. And we'll get a whole laundry list of all of these connections around here. And what I'm basically looking for is it's like, OK, great. We have this. Uh, here's one, Karopi, right? And WPA is on. It's, ver it's uh, WPA2 version 1 on that connection. So. Uh, if you haven't used a WPA supplicant before, it's actually a really easy command to go ahead and get your wireless on without having too much of a headache here in uh, the command prompt. What I like to do is use the WPA underscore pass phrase um, command. It makes it simple to go ahead and set your keys up. So all you do is pass it two parameters. The name of the access point, which we know is Karopi, K-E. R O P P I, somebody likes Hello Kitty here. And then the password will say password. And then when you do that, you'll see this is what your pre shared key looks like. All that good stuff right there. Mm. So, what I like to do is kind of just put that in, and I'll we'll put this in temp.conf, but you know, save it as whatever you like. And now I can reference that with a WPA supplicant file. You want to use tech capital B to put it in the background so you don't have a bunch of messages coming up. Okay. Tech D W A X T, those are your default options there. Your interface for me, it's WLAN 0, and then tech C to specify your configuration. We just save that in, into dot conf. And then once that's done, you should be associated. You should uh, run DH client, uh, your interface. And you'll go ahead and get a, uh, an IP address. And there you go. And that way, you're in more control. Uh, that's probably not going to happen because the password to that wireless access point isn't the password. Because, hey, go figure. <laughs> anyway. Uh, now, stay tuned because in just a bit, we're going to be back with the Technos photos and the trivia. I'm excited for those. Yay! Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone, but if you get Carbonate Online backup beforehand, you'll be worry-free because your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site. And it's really easy to get them back. Plus, you can get anytime, anywhere access to your backed up files from any computer or on your smartphone or iPad with the free Carbonite app. With Carbonite, unlimited backup for your PC or Mac is just $59 a year. That's less than five bucks a month. But if you use the offer code HAK5 to start your free 15-day trial, you get two months free if you decide to buy. All the details are over at Carbonite.com. And remember to use the offer code HAK5 to get two months free with purchase. 
It's time for the Technolust photo of the week. Are you excited? I'm excited as Yay! always. All right, so this one comes from David. He sends in this picture saying that he was sharing the Technolust with the fine citizens of Sydney. And by <laughs> sharing, of course, he means sniffing Wi-Fi packets on a boat. I'm on a boat. Yay. He's on a boat. And remember, you guys can always share your photos with us by sending them over to feedback at hack5.org. We love to share the technolists. And now it's time for the trivia. Ooh, I'm excited about that, as always. Ugh, you should be. Last week's trivia question was, this company that existed in the late 80s and early 90s created the software called Procom, and it, it was prominent before TCP IP became popular. <laughs> Wow, what's the next question going to be about? Trumpet Windsock? Oh my gosh! The answer was Data Storm, which uh, many people answered correctly, actually. I was very surprised. Now, this week we don't have another trivia question for you because we are going to DEF CON next week. So, we're taking a break from the trivia and we'll be back in season 10. Yes! How exciting! I know! Just blew through this season. Yeah, we did. Right, I'm looking forward I'm to season kind of, 10. Wow, season 10. This is 10. why we use four digit numbers for the episode schemes. That's you nuts. Know? I'm just saying, right? So it makes it sound Wait, like we've done like a thousand episodes no, instead well, of I mean, you know, no, I, I like the seasons for a lot of reasons, but uh, that will mean that the first episode will be 1001, mm -hmm. which is binary. <gasps> Ooh! Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. that binary for? Ten? Nine. Nine. Oh. Right, because it, it would be four. Uh, I'm sorry, it would be 8, 4, 2, 1. Mm -hmm. So it would be 1 plus, uh, so it would be 8 plus 1. Okay. Either way you look at it. Oh. Yep. Interesting. So it always goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Cool. Last but not least, make sure that you support the show and get the Titanal as delivered fresh three times a week. One, two, three times with Hack 5 and Hack Tip by subscribing. And while you're at it, Go what ahead else can so, you do? Yeah, go ahead and follow us on your social network of choice. You know the ones. Oh, we're yeah. All over Google the place. Plus, Facebook. What else are we on? Twitter? Yeah, we're all on Friendster, Catster. Friendster? What? Dog, no. Okay. And Packerster. you can always help out by telling your friends about the show and with your wallet at our very own hack shop. It's at hackshop.com. Yeah, because we've, we've got apparel in there. Yeah. Super excited. Apparel. Right we've got Wi Fi Pineapple 2s and Uber 2s and Ninja Stars. Ooh, like all the, all the delicious gadgets. Yay. All right. <laughs> until next week, I am Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And we're reminding you, of course, trust your Technolust. Trust your techno lust in Russia. Paul doesn't move anymore when we do stuff like that. <laughs> Did you just? I'm not going to do that when we're recording. <laughs> and that's it. Bye.